down on your knees. <laughs> Fuck him up! <laughs> we got gold! <laughs> From here on, nothing goes down unless I'm involved. No blackjack, no dope deals, no nothing. we are waiting years for this. I know what you're up to, White. Forget it. I'm gonna make you and your friends disappear long before that. Are you arresting me? Frank's Park Avenue attorney can get him out in 10 minutes. 10 minutes later! I feel no remorse. I got a quarter million dollar contract on anyone involved in this case. Hey, 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 that's mine. You son of a bitch. Hey, take those headphones off right now. the guardians of the galaxy and a bunch of a-holes this organized chaos podcast is brought to you by listeners like you thank you Hello, and welcome to another episode of an Organized Chaos Podcast. My name is Bobby Quarters. This week, we'll be t- discussing a very tasteful film about a kind old man. Another film about a group of ragtag heroes saving a galaxy. And the other one about probably one of the coldest men ever to live in New York City. And not in that order. With me this week, as always, is Bob. Bob, how are you? I'm doing okay. How you doing, Bobby? <laughs> Not so bad. Not so bad. Well, I mean, we did have... a bit more peckish than last week, but Mm -hmm. all right. (laughs) Well, uh, one thing you didn't talk about is that we are also going to, uh, my daughter and I went to a uh, Meg Myers concert, and we will be talking a little bit about that afterwards. Um, But yes, uh, you you brought up uh, the the couple of movies we'll be talking about, and yes. So (laughs) we'll go ahead and start out with the movie about a a couple of ragtag uh, people Going to fight a galaxy, save the galaxy. Yes, the we're, galaxy talking yes. we're talking about Caesar. We're talking about Caesar. Yes. Oh, <laughs> I know, did I get I know the, the order wrong? I did get the order wrong. Oh, well, foolish. no, no. This 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 movie is about a ragtag group of uh, fugitives going off to save the galaxy, right? Is it? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. I think we watched what? two. Then we must have watched two. <laughs> Two totally different movies. I'm I'm so confused. <laughs> what 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 I saw is a- actually a lot more than what i walked into mm. i will say that like i was kind of expecting like you know john wick meets like inglorious bastards sort of thing mm-hmm. and yeah no i kind of got hobo with a shotgun but only it's an old gold miner and he's killing yeah. nazis yeah and, no. and i was completely satisfied with that outcome yeah no i think I think uh, I will say like this. I will say one thing: this movie has absolutely going for it. the advertisements are exactly what you're getting. No middle ground at all. You wanna you wanna see a guy killing Nazis? This movie's it. <laughs> he is yeah, they killing do not Nazis. Disappoint. Yeah, they don't disappoint in that department. No. at all. And I think uh, I was. I don't, I don't know if this point is quite the right word, because, like, this movie was exactly what it sold itself as. I think I was a little spoiled by stuff like Violent Night, where it's, like, it has a bit more to it. And this movie doesn't. It is it is strictly a guy with gold going across the countryside, killing Nazis. Yeah, just wanting to cash in his gold. Yeah. And, and some Nazis fuck around, and, well... They find out. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, will, I will say... Uh, and... They don't hesitate any time getting into that plot point either. No, the the there's lots of gruesome uh there's lots of gruesome uh 
I don't know where I was going with this, but yeah, there there's gruesome stuff in this. But that being uh, said, well, um, if yeah. you had to pick one favorite <laughs> of the gruesome stuff, <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, dude! It has to be the the where he was hung up and he kind of propped himself up by that wound. Yeah, that was like oh that was, god, that was pretty bad. Oh, that god. was that was that was some really badass stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, at that point, I was thinking, well, I already know you're a hard ass, but yeah. <laughs> Shit. Uh, my favorite, like, gruesome uh, death, I would have to say, would be that first one where he stuck that fucking Crocodile Dundee knife right through the dude's head. That that was the opening kill, and that was a... Uh, yeah. That one sets you up for the movie. <laughs> it's like, damn. Yeah. I didn't I... think they could top that until the last kill, but... <laughs> Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, this movie does do creative kills. Uh, you gotta give it credit. They really do. Like, he threw a mine at a goo- guy's head. <laughs> it's like, he hit the head and boom. Yeah, it's like, he okay. threw it like a frisbee. Yeah, it's like, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, this is literally... Uh, I, did like, I, I did like the troop, the, the Nazi soldiers, sending, like, the foot soldiers out into the minefield. Yes, the yes. And then the one blows up, and it's like, yeah. The other guy takes a step, and then he blows up. Yeah. It's like, oh, jeez. Look, they're doing your work for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's one of those things where he's calling people up. It's like, guys, it's okay to desert once in a while. It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's cool okay. to desert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I still think the guy that lived out of all the soldiers, I, I feel he he should have suffered a little bit more. Mm. Just a bit more because of how we got an introduction to his character. The guy that all the girls had, like, hogtied to the tank at the end. Well, yeah, I mean... I mean, I'm I sure they, I'm... they tortured him. I mean, I, I, I know that. I mean, I, I will tell you this. I am satisfied with, the, the if nothing else this movie, I'm satisfied with the Nazi kills. <laughs> oh, I'm very satisfied with I mean, the Nazi kills. I, I think that guy who was the rapist should have died, but... Yeah. Or we should have gotten some fun torture scenes with him. <laughs> True. I mean, I think... I think they definitely had some fun torture in mind with for them. Oh. <laughs> but then again, it, it's better that they didn't show us, but yeah. it's just implied. Cause he looks like he's been through hell by the time we see him again. Like, mm-hmm. worse than he did before. So it's just like, good. I'm mm-hmm. happy he suffered. That's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I the, like I said, this movie's 100% what it's advertised for. Like, like I will I will warn. If, like, if you're looking for Violent Night, if you're looking for some movie with a bit more than what it's advertised for, don't. Don't. This movie is a guy killing Nazis, traveling with his gold, and that is it. Um, I think he has literally zero lines of dialogue till he gets to the bank at the end. Um, yeah, he's like, I, I, this gold's heavy. I want paper. I want. Paper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's one a, line of dialogue. Some, yeah, aside from a few grunts or anything. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think he has too many lines of dialogue. No, and uh, I, I kind of love the description of him. Like, he, like they're like, is he immortal? No, he's not immortal. He's too stubborn to die. <laughs> yeah, he's just too. He just refu- there's a, He refuses to die. I mean, there's that bit where he literally lights himself on fire. It's like, okay, he's he's a badass. He's a. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I see you don't fear death. Death fears mm-hmm. to you. Got it. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> and yeah, I like uh, you know th- this is the point where like you know normally I'd like to talk about themes or story. There's really um, not much of one. <laughs> just... No, there, there, there's something that we can talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ooh. Did you expect to see some beautiful cinematography in this? Not just the violence, but of well, the that... landscape, not the lay of the land of where it was, like. Did you not expect just to be kind of going like, God, that is gorgeous. Like, that is a beautiful shot. No, uh, yeah, I I wasn't quite expecting that. That was a good surprise. Because they I, they did a good wow. damn good job with some of those shots. Yeah, yeah but just uh, they, the locations, too. Mm-hmm. My goodness. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Like, beautiful cinematography. I did mm-hmm. not expect that in like a... Uh, Nazi slaughter fest. Yeah, film, which it is. It is. 
but it was quite nice. Like, yeah. you know, like a nice, like, um, palate cleanser. Not yeah, that for sure. one would be needed. For yeah, I mean. Nazis get brutally slaughtered. I'm well, what I, what I like to say about this movie is the good thing about this movie and the, the main guy we follow is that throughout this movie, he never harms any human beings. Just Nazis. Yeah. Nazis don't, Nazis don't count. No, they don't count. They're not. They're not. <laughs> they're, they're Nazis. They're not. Come no. on. <laughs> a, a rat deserves sympathy. A Nazi doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> no. Not. Not. Nazis are awful. Yeah. They. They. Yeah. I don't yeah. care. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why only snitches just get the stitches. You know, it's <laughs> the Nazis. They just. They, they don't deserve the organs in their body. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, like. I th- I'm glad you brought the cinematography because that's a great point because it, yeah. it does look beautiful. But yeah, it's uh... gorgeous. I I just I, I, that's one thing I was just really blown away by. Mm-hmm. Just like I mean the locations. I mean I'm I'm hoping they they actually did film in Finland because that is where I believe it was taking place. Yes, that is where it was taking place. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah and I oh man, gorgeous! Like mm-hmm. just wow. Yeah. I, it... I, I was also expecting a film that I was going to be reading subtitles, or they would have done something like, um, uh, like they did in Valkyrie, how it showed like a close up of of one character speaking German, oh. and then it just instantly switched to English, and mm-hmm. then the rest of the film was in English. Well, I'm trying to remember. I I think the first time I saw them do that is uh, Star Trek Six. All right. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, anything you want to add to uh, Sizu, the story about a ragtag group of uh, of intergalactic uh, fugitives <laughs> saving the galaxy? Uh, no, no, other than the cinematography and how fucking beautiful that was. Yeah, know? yeah, it was beautiful. Uh, so, yeah, now, what, what is this? This is the story about a, 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 a guy in Finland man, traveling the countryside man. with gold and killing Nazis. Is this sad? No, this is the king of New York, man. This is this is <laughs> walking. Yeah, true. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd ever heard of this movie before. Um, damn, yeah. it, it, this movie has a cast. Holy shit! Yeah, okay, really, really quickly, I meant to text you this before, yeah. uh, like after the show, um, last week. Uh, for how many times did you go? Oh hey, oh hey, oh hey. Yeah, yeah. No, that was quite a. Well, the, the, that was mostly happening when they're doing like the opening credits. It's like, oh shit, they're in mm-hmm. this. Oh shit, they're in this. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, Christopher Walken. Yeah, okay, I see him. Lawrence Fishburne. Okay, yeah. Larry Fishburne. Yeah, that makes sense for this time period. Okay. Um, Wesley Snipes. Holy shit. Uh, David Caruso. Holy shit. Uh, uh, uh. Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi in like the briefest role ever, but yes, he is absolutely in it. Um, and then also uh, Garcano Esposito. Yeah, uh, uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah, Giancarlo. Um, that's it. Yeah. I believe yeah, he was. was... Holy shit! I think yeah. he was five when he did this movie. <laughs> he was young. <laughs> Uh, he he was he was very very young when he did this. And it, it I will say it's interesting watching him because I'm so used to him doing the Gus thing. And then like I, I always wondered if that was just like his acting style or if that was just like like a character he got typecast into. And upon seeing this movie, I just see it's a character he got typecast into because here he's he's completely different. He is not doing the Gus yeah. thing at all. He was... No, he is not. Uh, he is. But he walking is... though. He, he he's pretty chilling in this movie. Yeah, well, that was the interesting thing I found about this movie because throughout this movie, I'm like, okay, I'm not rooting for anybody, like at all. Yeah, like everybody right. is kind of awful here. Um, you know, er, you yeah. know, and, and that's actually kind of the interesting thing I found, like at the end of this movie, because it's like everybody almost—that's almost the point of this movie. Everybody sees themselves as the good guy. Everybody sees what they're doing. As like, uh, you know, it's a means to an end. You know, I'm trying to make the world better by doing this awful thing. But the world will be better if I do this awful thing. Um, And lots of characters, they have good moments. And then just moments where they're fucking monsters. In fact, probably pretty much all the characters have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, what, uh, Lawrence Fishburne's Jimmy. Um, Probably the most obvious example. He's essentially uh, the heavy for Christopher Walken. He's just killing people right and left. Um, but then there's a scene where he's ordering food and, you know, there's this kid and he wants to, you know, play the arcade machine 
and the 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 right, clerk the store was kind of a was yeah. kind of a dick to him. Yeah, he was like, "You don't have any money. Stay away from that arcade machine." And Lawrence was like, "Hey, don't don't do that." And he gave the kids some money. He gave the mom money to pay for the food. It's like, you know, he has this moment <laughs> where it's like, "Oh shit, he, he's not just a heart, heartless killer, is he?" <laughs> no, um, like he actually has some humanity to him. Like, and yeah, and because the first time we see him early in the film, we're introduced to him, and he he's a cold blooded killer. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, I actually thought that scene was interesting because at first, like, yeah. he's he's making that deal with that guy and the guy, like, adds money to it and, you know, Lawrence Fishburne. Apparently, it looks like he just rolls over and, you know, is like, okay, we'll pay the extra money. And I remember thinking, well, that seems kind of weak. I, you know, don't don't take that deal. He's fucking you over. And of course, he just kills yeah. him. It's like, oh, that's why he took the deal because he didn't care. Because <laughs> he was never giving you money in the first place. Yeah, he's just going to take take your drugs and run. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so the movie opens, Christopher Walken's getting out of prison and he's fairly quickly getting established, like almost instantly, like, uh, Lawrence Fishburne comes to meet up with him and it's like the gang's back together and he's just taking out the, the, the big crime boss in New York and taking over essentially. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Yeah, it was just like not missing a beat. Um, like I said, um, so, oh. well, something I found interesting about this, and I did yeah. some reading about this before, actually, like weeks before. And when I picked it, I had just done all the research, so I wanted mm -hmm. to watch it and talk a little bit about it. Um, so this role, I feel, and I know that there's like some other like critics and walking fanatics who have talked about this, uh, but I f I also agree with them and will echo the sentiment that this is definitely the genesis of the walk-in that we all know. Like, everyone's Christopher Walken impersonation is based off of oh, yeah. it started from this movie. Because mm -hmm. this is all of those things. Yeah, I could get that, yeah. I... Uh, like, just how uh, his emphasis on certain words, how yeah. some he'll end and then raise his voice with the next word, just... That delivery, it really was born here because you could watch stuff prior to this where he doesn't really do that. He kind of just straight walk through it. You mm -hmm. know, but well, I'm trying to this one. Yeah, was this in the Deer Hunter? And there's a the few others that are really the genesis of it. But was Dead Hunter? This is or one Dead of them. Hunter. Dead Zone before Dead Zone was before this, right? I want to say yeah, because this was 1990. Yeah, I I think that was 80s. It's been so long since I've seen that. But yeah, Christopher it, Walken is the good was, guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and also I, I, I reading, though, I do see that uh, or I, I do remember reading that the director gave Chris a lot of freedom mm -hmm. in this to improvise. So all those yeah. dance things spur the moment. And that was the take <laughs> they took. Yeah, that, that was kind of funny. But it's like it gets the point across. That they're just friends and are comfortable with each other and. They'll be goofballs yeah. with each other. It it worked. <laughs> uh, and it was interesting seeing like these ruthless killers just kind of doing goofy dances. It's like, okay. But like I said, it gets the point across. Um, but yeah, uh, you have Wesley Snipes and David Caruso who are essentially just cops. Um, and it gets tough to tell the difference between the cops and the gang members because eventually the cops just get sick of how they're always like buying their way out and just decide to do a hit on them. Uh, yep. <laughs> like I said, there's no good guy. Like if you're looking for a movie where there's good guys and bad guys, this isn't it. This is just a whole bunch of bad guys killing each other. But they, they'll they, lots of them have good moments, and that's where it gets weird. That's yeah, because even. Even Christopher Walken at the end, he has that speech where he's talking about how, um, you know, this, you know, this one guy, all the crime bosses he killed were like really fucking pieces of shit. And he's like, you know, essentially like, aren't I better? And it's like, wow, <laughs> it's like choosing your poison. <laughs> yeah. But like you're, I said, you're really picking a battle there, Chris. Yeah, it's it's an interesting movie. Um like I said, I had never seen it until last night. Um, but yeah, I think it's worth checking out. Enjoy it, though. yeah, it absolutely is. It's like uh, I would definitely call it an uh, like uh, one that was released definitely under the radar, mm -hmm. but very much overlooked mm -hmm. and is worth 
checking out. Yeah, it if, is worth it. If nothing else, just to all the fucking like this is like a collection of before they are famous roles. <laughs> yeah. Like La- Lawrence Fishburne was still going by Larry Fishburne, which I yeah. think there's only maybe a small amount of credits that he actually went by Larry Fishburne. Under. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, there, like obviously, there's this. There's a uh, the the one lawyer, one class action. Um, there's a there was a movie. Uh, he was in uh, the second Death Wish movie. And he's okay. Larry Fishburne in that too. I yeah. know there's probably a couple more, but yeah, it's. When do you go by Lawrence? I mean, obviously, I there's Pee Wee's pay- Playhouse, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, there's that. <laughs> See, all the to kiddies, he's known as Cowboy Curtis, you know? Mm-hmm. I've seen him in a lot of other things, but yeah. he's just a bad, bad motherfucker. Like I mean, this, he's, so. he's, I think it's safe to say in King of New York and in Pee Wee's Playhouse, he essentially plays the same character. <laughs> yeah, that is Cowboy Curtis. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, like I said, this was a uh, this is one I've never seen before. But yeah, I was kind of happy to watch it because it was wild. It was, it was, yeah, it was, it was good. It's, yeah. it's it is good. I'm happy you enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I have another pick coming up, don't I? Yes, yes. Ooh. I've already made you watch Ready to Rumble, haven't I? Yes, yes. Yeah. That one wasn't as good. That one... <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well okay I'll, I'll have to pick one mm-hmm. i think i have one in mind, i think we but... got a couple weeks till then let me look <clears throat> pardon me it is i guess two weeks because next week we okay. got guardians three which i'm looking forward to and then fast and furious six and then mission two and then your choice is coming up. So you better know next next week or else okay. or else you'll just have to tell me midweek and we won't be able to hype it up. Because I know everybody's here to hear our thoughts of King of New York, which, by the way, I know I know this movie wasn't exactly the draw why you clicked on this podcast, but yeah, it's worth not. checking out. If you if you're interested in a crime drama with Christopher Walken and a whole bunch of people before they are famous. This is yeah. worth checking out. <laughs> and I mean, this movie also very much ends like. Kind of in the same way how The Departed, and so I guess The Departed must have borrowed a bit from this. I guess, yeah. Where, like, almost everybody dies at the end. Mm-hmm. I, 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 although, I, I, you, you've you just put that on it, and I will say, this isn't as good as Departed. This is not Martin Scorsese. No, but it, 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 is, it, it is good. It's just not on that level. <laughs> I mean, if Scorsese directed this... <sighs> Shit, man. <laughs> it'd be a different movie, but it would still yeah. be great. Yeah, no, I know, that'd be a whole nother level, yeah. That'd probably be yeah, Departed. Of, <laughs> yeah, that'd probably be The Departed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is, a, this is a solid movie worth checking out. Um, it's not particularly long, it's like uh, 100 minutes long, so... Yeah, yeah it's, it's not a one long day, one. Totally worth checking out. <laughs> uh, anything, you, anything you want to add before we jump into uh, The Guardians? No, just like a great Christopher Walken performance, great mm-hmm. performance by a bunch of no. at the time unknowns. And, yeah, and everybody was great in and, this. And, mm. and I gotta say, David Caruso is such a dick in this. Oh yeah, well that's the thing. Like He's I said, there's no good guys. Prick. The cops are dicks. The crime lords are dicks. It's like I'm not rooting for anybody. But like, yeah. then they almost all have these little moments where it's like, oh well, that was nice. That was. I, I also kind of think it's interesting that we didn't meet the police until about halfway into this movie. True, yeah. We spent well, more time with the criminals than we did the police. Well, when the, like Wesley Snipes and uh, David Caruso first pop up, I wasn't even 100% sure they were the police until like it becomes clear. It's like, oh. Yeah, at first okay. I thought, like, what, are these rival gangs? Yeah, that's what it seemed like. And it's like, who's oh. The, I was like, it's who's the cops? ginger? Oh, that's David Caruso. Yeah. Oh, that's David Caruso. That's who that ginger is. <laughs> but, uh, you yeah. know that he was also in Hudson Hawk. Uh, that seems familiar. It's he played Kit Kat, the guy who just talked by uh, holding up cards. That's right. Yes, is... <laughs> that was a that <laughs> was a weird that, one. That's, now, that's why I that's why I say that's like you know my favorite David Caruso role. You know why? Because mm-hmm. he doesn't talk. <laughs> hey, uh, so King of New he, York he is better than Hudson Hawk, but Hudson Hawk is the, I entertainingly don't, I don't bad. How... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, Hudson Hawk is entertaining. Yeah, it's Hudson got Hawk like is, you know, like yeah. 
the two bad, the two villains in that, they like take campy uh, acting and just crank it to 11. And yeah. It's kind of marvelous. Yeah. Uh, so, just yes. How ridiculous it is. Yes. But this is just a very, very beautifully shot, too. Crime drama. Mm hmm. So, I guess, are we ready to talk about a movie about uh, a whole bunch of rival gangs and cops being bad guys and shooting up each other? You mean, are we ready to plug next week's episode by the next segment? Yes. You, you mean, you mean... <laughs> by the way, if, by the way, if you're watching <laughs> us on YouTube, please, yes. please, mm. please give us a like and a subscribe. Like, and also, subscribe. Hit the, bell, hit the bell so you know when we do new stuff. Yes, yes. It really helps us. We are, and we are terrible at asking. Me. Yes, we, we should be doing that and, like, uh, all the time. Yeah, <laughs> we should do that as the, we should just add it as the intro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, um, uh, and also, if you're listening on any other platform, Spotify or wherever else you get your podcast, give us a follow on that as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and if you're follow watching on a YouTube or Spotify, go to one of the other platforms and follow us because it all helps us out. <laughs> yes. Yes. Create a ghost account on that yes. and never <laughs> log on to it. Only but listen to our our show on that. Yes. Nothing else. And then and then create an art ghost account and then do the same thing. Yes. And then yes. Yes. And, and it just becomes this ever perpetuating cycle. <laughs> but it will help us out a lot. <laughs> it will. But uh, yes. Very much. So the gritty crime drama starring Christopher Walken, Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been a different movie. <laughs> You're not wrong. Although, like, I wouldn't put past James Gunn to put Christopher Walken in one of these. But yeah, um, it doesn't look like that's happening. But yeah. Uh, oh, this one. Yeah, this definitely introduced uh, us to uh, the cast or the Guardians. Yeah. In this. yeah. Well, I mean, this is kind of the, one of the big experiments by the MCU. Can they introduce like they've been playing around with B-list characters and like. Guardians, I don't even know, count as C-list. They're like D-list characters when this movie came out. And it's easy to forget yeah. that. Cause like, but like, even me as a comic book fan, I had heard of Guardians of the Galaxy. I'd never read a but comic never, book. Like, read I, it, yeah. Like, until the movie was announced, once the movie was announced, I actually researched it. But before then, I really didn't know, like, the, the characters. They're like, oh, one of them's a tree and one's a raccoon. I'm like, I don't know that. I don't know. <laughs> I remember I had heard of them. Yeah. And I had heard that, too. Mm hmm And then just kind of going, oh. <laughs> like, kind of like, like, oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I, I, but someone going, yeah, Marvel has some weird stuff. You know, they're also responsible for Howard the Duck. And yeah, that's true. in the same universe. And it's like, okay. Mm -hmm. True. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, sure. I'll, I'll I mean, go along with it. I, I had read Infinity but other God. than, yeah, other than that. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah, I'd read. Them, and then, yeah. I'd, I'd read Infinity Gauntlet, so I knew about Drax, and I knew about Gamora, and that's about it. And, and Gamora doesn't even have a huge role in Infinity Gauntlet. She's just kind Nebula of there has until... a bigger role in that one. Yes, yes, she does. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, this is uh lots of people, and, and to a lesser degree, my first uh, introduction to these characters, and yeah, James Gunn did a great job because. Talk about another group of uh, characters that are kind of old dicks, with the difference being I actually yeah. like them this time, uh, as opposed to the last movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, a as uh, John C. Riley says, you know, they're not one hundred percent dicks. They're... Can anyone be a one hundred percent dick? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And I believe he, that no one can. Yeah, yeah he's she, she's asking, do you believe him? It's like. He, he turns it around like it's a philosophical question. It's like, no, I I just meant, do you trust him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> On this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, they don't want the galaxy to get blown up. All their stuff's there. <laughs> but yeah, this is... Yeah. No, this is definitely one of those movies. It was a... Yeah, it's... This was one where, uh, you know... The movie's kind of sold, kind of, you know, ragtag group, you know, saves the galaxy. And yeah, uh, when you actually watch it, like, you actually get, like, you actually, like, grow affection for all these characters. And that's what James Gunn does a really good job at. Um, you know. Uh, 
I noticed that again rewatching it this yeah. time, and uh, I'll say the one part that really uh, even got me the first time when I saw this in the theater mm-hmm. was uh, when Rocket said, "I never asked to be made." Yeah. Mm, that that one made like, oh, damn it! Did my favorite character just become a fucking raccoon? Yeah. No, they yes. all they all have great moments. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes, my favorite character just became a raccoon, and then how much I love that shot of Drax just consoling him. Yeah! Like, like, and just the one shot of just their backs, where you see Drax reaching over and just, like, touching, like, putting yeah. his hand on Rocket. Like, going, like, and that's a beautiful shot right there, too. Mm-hmm. Thank you, James Gunn. Yeah. No, just, like, the fact that they have the, this affection for each other. Like, yeah. Like Drax is like calling them these awful names, but then when Nebula calls him an awful name, she just he just blasts her. It's like, fuck you, you don't get to call my friends awful names. It's my job. <laughs> my job. <laughs> <laughs> also also the literalness of Drax. I, yes. I still just love No. I would nothing it's impossible for anything to go over my head. My yeah. reflexes would catch it. It's like that just did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's going, oh, I, I just think, more, man, you did that with a straight face. No. Like, well, uh, I'm sure all of them laughed more than he did, because, I mean, he's, I mean, him being an ex-pro wrestler, you mm-hmm. know, I'm sure he's had to, like, go out and cut promos and have to, like, keep one sort of way. And yeah. And break character or anything like that. Well, that, that was the thing that was kind of cool. Like, Batista was so excited for this, he actually went out and got acting lessons for it, and... Yeah. Frankly, the fact that he was excited enough to get acting lessons, it really shines through. Because I, I don't remember the movie I saw him in before this. Because I remember I saw him in a movie that he did before this, and he, he didn't do a good job. He wasn't that great. Yeah. yeah, and it really made me concerned when he was cast here. Then I saw him in this, and I went, he was really good. He was, And yeah, he is. And He's he really good and old. Really, He's only gotten yeah, better, yeah. And- yeah, like, the last thing I think we watched him in was um, uh, either the Guardian's Christmas special or Knives Out, or Glass Onion. Yeah. Which, he was fucking as hell in both. Yeah, actually, it He's wouldn't surprise me if I go game. go through his, uh, you know, IMDb and say, like, every role he's done, he's got him better. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Because, um, yeah, yeah, he's just fucking good anymore. Um, he's, re- he's a reliable actor. He went from an actor I thought was not very good to... Fucking reliable. <laughs> now, if only The Rock would take acting lessons. Yeah. You see... The jabroni. It's so weird. Like, I think The Rock is good at that one character he does. But then that's it. And then, whereas you get, like, Dave Batista, who I actually know. has range. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've, I've heard the comparison of Vin Diesel's acting to Dwayne Johnson's acting. Which I think is a very unfair thing, but then again, they both released a kids movie that is literally the same thing. Yeah, didn't they? At the same time. Yeah, the, it was like the Pacifier and, and Tooth Fairy or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like literally the same movie. Yeah, it, they look like the posters look the same. And the too. Vin Diesel and the Vin Diesel one was better. Mm-hmm. That, I think the Vin Diesel's. Because he one could is act the one with I've the seen. kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he could actually act with the kids, and mm-hmm. that's what made it better. <laughs> well, I remember, uh, like, when there was first the big ego fights between them on the Fast set, and, like, I think most everybody, including me, kind of felt like Vin Diesel was guy being the big ego. But then, yeah. like, recently with The Rock finding out that he refused to be the villain in Shazam 2, it was like... Maybe they just it's... both have big fucking egos and they both need to fucking relax. <laughs> now, now, it, I love it when he goes into a WWE ring with the big yeah. Hollywood ego because that's the character he could play off well in that environment, in that setting. Yeah, I was about to right say, yeah, he, in wrestling, he did that's do that. needed. Yeah, he, yeah mm. he, he did that in one point. And mm-hmm. It was after he had had a little bit of success. Nothing to like today. But like, if he were to come back today... Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think he could. I don't know if he could hang in the mm-hmm. anymore. And that's not a dig against his physicality or anything. It's just it's been a while since he's done it. Mm-hmm. I've seen some other guys of his time come back, and it it, it looked okay. Yeah, I, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> it, it looked okay. I mean, yeah, you 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 did it. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but that, that's all. And, and I wouldn't want him to hurt himself yeah. or anything like that. Oh, shit. This past WrestleMania, uh, Vince's kid Shane came out and one move happened. So one bump and he tore an ACL. Ooh. It, it, I watched it happen. I saw him not getting up going, oh, oh, no, 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 no. That does not look good. Mm -hmm. That did not look good. Mm -hmm. Oh, but Snoop Dogg saved the day. And I'm not even making that up. Oh. <laughs> Snoop was there. Snoop was there. It was it was like a WrestleMania in Los Angeles. So, of course, Snoop Dogg's there. Of course. Why, why won't he be? Was yeah. he wrestling? But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he did He did do a move. He did do a people's elbow. Yeah. I mean, it was not a speed one. I mean, Snoop definitely moved carefully in that ring. <laughs> well, I, I think... I, I think it, I think at the end of the day, um, if you have to choose between Vin Diesel, The Rock, or Dave Bautista, Dave Bautista, yeah, Dave Bautista, no doubt, yeah, no. Dave Bautista. But Vin Diesel is in this too, and we got to give him his yes. credit. Yes, absolutely. He well, is... he he's literally paid to say two different lines, one of them in several different ways. Mm -hmm. But I've also heard him say this is the easiest paycheck I've ever gotten, but mm -hmm. also the funnest. Well, that's the thing. Like, like he had the most fun just making up different ways to say it. There, the the story was he he campaigned hard to get a Marvel role, um, and there was yeah. the rumor that he was gonna be like the live action Black Bolt. And since they kind of ruined, ruined uh, ugh, since they kind of ruined Inhumans, that's not really happening. But um, okay, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, but Vin Diesel enjoyed it so much that uh, you know he didn't have that many lines. So, uh, what he did to kind of make up for it was that he did all the foreign language tracks as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no matter what language you watch this movie in, Vin Diesel does Groot. <laughs> and that's, that's very impressive. Mm -hmm. Like, very No, that's pretty impressive. cool, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think you're getting that with Bradley <laughs> Cooper, but of course he has a lot more lines, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bradley did have a lot more, but I, I... I really paid attention to both of their parts more mm -hmm. in this yeah and just like just their infliction and like you know how they were saying their their lines i mean with vin it wasn't that hard mm -hmm. there was times when i could tell he had just a shit-eating grin on his face yeah <laughs> like there's a few i could tell <laughs> just a few he just had a big old grin on his face when <laughs> he was saying it and it's going like yeah they just handed you that check didn't they Vin? yeah it's I an easy check. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and Brad's t Bradley Cooper, though, it's like for him being a great actor on screen as is. Yeah. Man, he. Yeah. Like, like I said earlier, that line that he said, I never was asked to even be made. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's like all a CGI character, but just everything about the voice and everything just made. Just, I felt for him. Well, that's, that's something that's also worth considering is the fact that. Uh... This movie really made you feel for the CGI characters. Like, you forget their CGI very quickly in this movie. Yeah. Like, you just, it's just Rocket and Groot. You forget that, like, you have actors interacting with these characters, but, uh, like, they're not interacting with anybody, but they feel like they're there. They just feel like characters, and that's, that is always an accomplishment. But yeah, this was a. I will say, kind of my, unlike the second one, kind of my opinion of this movie has kind of stayed the same, um, more or less since the year it came out. I know I appreciate it a bit more after the video release, but yeah, it's it's still just, in my opinion, a really good movie, a great introduction to them, um, and I am excited to see how the third one turns out. Um, yeah, I am too. The, in my opinion, this has the pen potential honestly to be the best superhero movie or movie trilogy ever um because what well, i think right now that bar for me is at uh, the captain america trilogy kind mm. of need to hmm yeah because well i'm thinking like i was trying to think of it earlier no, like I'm what's thinking. competing I'm yeah thinking. best superhero In, like, trilogy because like superhero trilogies okay. yeah I mean, Sam Raimi um, kind of messed up with Spider-Man 3, so that one... No, no. That one had Universal potential, but... You <laughs> no, 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 Bob. Universal fucked up with Spider-Man 3. Well, true, but Spider-Man 3 still... 
it it it's it's our death it's not trilogy. i'm not saying it's great yeah but they <laughs> should have they should have just held venom off oh absolutely and, absolutely and mm. just done the mysterio and done the mysterio and vulture plan frankly like they originally thought, frankly but, yeah, yeah they should have just had sam sam did two great movies for you just just let him do whatever he wants <laughs> Yeah, like they should have done the original plan of the Mysterio intro as Bruce. Yeah, that would have been awesome. And uh, the Vulture in the vault and Gone with the Vulture. Which yeah, I believe they had John Malkovich pinned for that. Which that would have been cool. <laughs> that's that's Fuck the movie John right Malkovich. there. Malkovich. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, well, and, and said we they give us fucking Topher Grace as Eddie Brock. Mm-hmm. Well, dude, you need to understand. You could never make a good uh, cinematic uh, Vulture. It would never work. <laughs> the bat says different. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of the Flash movie. That looks good. <laughs> but yes, yeah. best superhero trilogies. Yeah. Um, what the Iron Contender would be Dark Knight, but like Rises yeah. doesn't completely shit the bed, but is definitely the weak one. Is de- yeah, three is the weakest of that. So, um, hmm. the first three Supermans. I I can I cannot give you Superman three. I just cannot. <laughs> Superman At two has its, its issues, four. but it's but four. Well, true. It's not four. But very few and things. Four are is four. the only one. <laughs> four is the only one that is a canon film too. So I don't include it in that canography. Mm. Now, hmm. Damn. By the way, yeah. if, if you have uh, any Captain, suggestions in the Captain comments, America. drop it in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would definitely say uh, the Captain America is top ranking for me. Yeah, I can't I, think I of a better one. Early in, I mean, out of all the first of like the few phases of the Marvel films, like those are my favorites. Mm-hmm. Of like. Them. Like, the, I do love the Captain America's the best. Yeah, frankly, the, the worst one is the first one, and that one is still a pretty fucking solid origin story. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty solid, it, and it definitely is the weakest of it. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, I think it spends a little bit too much time on, like, world building when mm-hmm. World War Two. we really don't need a lot of building. Yeah. It. I think everybody walking in there has a general idea of what that was like on the scale because these were written post war if I'm not mistaken. Captain America Captain America was, was created during the war. During the war, that's yep. right. Yeah, he was created during World War II. It was considered very mistake. controversial to have him punching out uh uh Hitler because at the time uh n- there was Nazi sympathy in the United States. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know there was. There was even parties with There still is company. now, but you know <laughs> Yeah, but they're not getting. But they weren't running on like major platform tickets. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, they they do. They just they don't hide behind. Yeah, I'm not gonna get into. Yeah, that. yeah, we don't need to get too far into that. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But they, they they don't they just don't advertise the party as openly as they used to. Yeah, but, but uh, leave it at that. But yeah, uh, I think Guardians of the Galaxy has a serious chance to be the best superhero trilogy, and we will see it, you next week. It, it mm. does. This, this third one does. I know that, um, you know, if you look through various message boards or, you know, mm-hmm. people talking about Marvel Comics, I know there's people who just love to, for lack of a better phrase, piss on the apple pie for no other reason. Well, yeah. Just piss on the apple pie. But, I mean, there is the fatigue setting in with a lot of people and a lot of moviegoers. Um, we're going to see how it is. I know Marvel hasn't had as great of success as they have in the past, but I think a lot of that is, is just because they were all building to Infinity War and Endgame. Mm-hmm. And they had been building to that for how many years? That was 10, 10, 11 years? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I mean, I could understand people going like that, and this is also why Marvel's kind of rolled back their releasing a little bit, just mm-hmm. because, hey, we don't want people to get burnt out. But you Well, know, we, we, I mean, yeah. there there was I mean, also... More of a story to tell. There's also COVID, which lots of people like to forget. Yes. Numbers are down across the board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm, not, and I'm not saying things like Rotten Tomatoes matters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... I I I got 
I'm very curious to see where it goes. Yes. Now, I I do think that the Disney Plus thing is going to kind of bite him in the ass a little here. Yeah, we'll have to see, but yeah. Solely just because of the Guardians Christmas special. Mm-hmm. Now, did that air on Broadcast Network at all? No, I don't think so. I think that was straight to Disney Plus. There's a major plot element in that. Mm-hmm. That's definitely going to get carried over into three. I mean, I hope it does something. Well, obviously, Kevin Bacon's going to be a major character in three. No, I'm not talking about that. I mean, that that should be because Kevin Bacon (laughs) is a fucking hero. He's saved the world. He saved us from from man-eating earthworms. True. (laughs) He saved us from John Lithgow not allowing us to dance. (laughs) Yes, he <laughs> saved us. He saved an entire stem with sticks up their asses. Yes, yes. And how did the sticks get up their asses? We don't know. We don't. <laughs> it was very that's not, painful. That's though. Not what's important. It was very. Who would do that? That is just unnatural. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, the Guardians uh, of the Galaxy. I, I we've do. all seen it. It's well, great. Yeah. Well, the Christmas special. How they revealed that uh, Mantis and Quill are siblings. Yes. So um, that I. I feel like that can be a drop in there without do, going too deep into it. Because, yeah, it's nice to have the Christmas special establish it. But, yeah, like, you kind of get the implication in two. So, like, I feel like dropping it in won't be that huge. Mm. It could also just be, like, I mean, who knows? Mm-hmm. We could have literally seen a part of, uh, or they could just say it and, like, have it just be that. Mm-hmm. We will have to see. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's why I kind of felt like the Marvel shows, like the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. stuff, how a lot of that had stuff to tie into with some of the movies that led mm-hmm. on. Like, I kind of felt that kind of hurts it because, you know, like, let's say that people won't have the time to catch it or anything. Like, yeah. This is before streaming services. I think it kind of hurts them to do that, but and I still think it does. Like, it, it, if they keep it to the films, that's probably the best way to do it. Now, I get it, and it's, like, stuff for the fans and everything, but I, 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 I just, think, I just, yeah. I think they've done a decent job keeping it to the films. Like, uh... But also, don't... I've seen almost every reviewer in Reactor who watched the Guardians well, Christmas special go on and on and on about the, the sibling factor. Yeah. So I, don't, I think at this point it, it should be well known or mm-hmm. hopefully that everyone has seen that. Mm-hmm. It's not required to see it, but it helps. But if not, yeah, you just kind of found out the gist of it. Mm-hmm. Mantis is Peter Quill's sister. They're steps. Mm-hmm. They're, they're step siblings. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, and, and if you think about what happens in two, that it actually follows through. It makes logical sense. It makes um, a lot of sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's a uh, like the first Guardians, a great movie. Second one's even better in my opinion. Although when I first saw it, I thought it was quite a bit worse. Um, so we'll see. Like third one might be like the second one, where it just grows on me. So yeah, we'll just yeah. have to see next week. I am excited well, to see pretty- it though. That's probably my most yeah, anticipated well, well, movie this year. Mm. What are your predictions for it? Oh, I try not to think too much on it. I mean, I know Adam Warlock's going to be in it. I know, um, I can't remember the name, but the guy who created Rocket's going to be a key player. I don't know if he's going to be the main yeah. villain or not. I'm actually not 100% sure who the main villain's going to be. And yeah, I'm I kind of trying to keep... Or... Yeah, I think I suspect it's him, but I, I don't know. I'm trying to keep myself in the dark as much as possible. I can't avoid the trailers. Yeah, me too. But like, I, I want to yeah. go in there and just watch it because i just love these first two movies and i'm ready to just go in there and just just whatever well, you do james gunn just give me my, a movie. Give my me predictions a... are based off of what i know and i do know that dave patisa's contract with marvel is up zoe yeah. sandell's co- contract with marvel is up and uh chris pratt's contract with marvel is up mm-hmm. and i read an interview recently where zoe was saying that you know they she hopes that they recast her Mm-hmm. Yeah, Zoe Saldana says she's done. I know Dave Batista has kind of said he's done. Um, I think you'd give him back if he if it's in our James Gunn project, but that's probably just going to be on DC. Um, yeah, so uh, I know that he's already talking. I know that he's already been talking to James about, or James has been talking about playing some DC characters, which mm-hmm. I'm okay with. No, but based yeah. off of that, I have a feeling we might see the death of Star Lord in this. We'll have to see. Now that he actually can die, although we didn't know that until the second one. Um, yeah. yeah. 
And no, I wouldn't surprise me if characters actually die. Um, and knowing James Gunn, he will handle it well. So, yeah, I just want to see what happens. <laughs> I'm also expecting just a bitchin' soundtrack, too. Well, of course. No, I have to think, we like didn't even bring the, the soundtrack banner, here. Because yeah. the soundtrack the to this one and the other ones are great. Like, these random rock songs just thrown in there from, like, the 70s. Is there any 80s? I think it's just like, 70s stuff. Yeah. But, uh... Like late 70s, late, late, mid to late 70s stuff. Yeah. Just those, like, all those AM classics. But, like, they use, he used the excuse that it's the playlist as Mother made for him. So that way the mm-hmm. songs just kind of flow into the movie and you don't really think about it too much. And it's, like, yeah. that's really a smart way to just bring, like, 70s rock into this, yeah, outer space adventure. And, <laughs> and at the end of, uh, too, how, uh... Ego destroyed Quill's uh, tape player, but Yondu bought him a Zune. Yeah, because the rage on Earth. Yeah, everybody has a Zune, right? Everybody... <laughs> I'll, when I saw that in the theaters, I might have been the only one laughing out. I that. I thought that was pretty funny. That got a chuckle from me. I was like, oh yeah, god. <laughs> oh, I laughed out loud to that one in the theater. I thought that was fucking funny. Mostly just because I owned a Zune. Yeah, I yeah. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I looked at one. I was like, maybe. I had, it is cheap. I had that. <laughs> I had that and an iPod Nano, mostly mm-hmm. loaded with like similar stuff. Just when one died, I would just switch it out. <laughs> but yes, this is a. Uh, it's an awesome movie. If you haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy, watch Guardians of the Galaxy. What are you doing listening to this podcast? Make sure to give yeah. it a like and subscribe. Uh, watch yes. Guardians of the Galaxy. Hit, the bell. <laughs> Hit that bell so you know when we drop some freshness. Yes, yes. But yeah, um, I guess We're mostly next, consistent. <laughs> uh, next, we will go ahead and uh, I guess I'll bring in my daughter and we'll talk about Meg Myers a bit. So, I think we need to sit really close and be like, <laughs> no, <laughs> that seems awkward. That doesn't seem awkward at all, does it? I mean. It seems pretty normal to me. Yeah, that's normal. That's, that's how normal. people interact with each other. Always when, in when real you're life. recording in a car, you just go. <laughs> <laughs> I look really fat from this pose. Of course I am kind of fat. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, so we are. Uh, we are. Uh, we just parked to go see Meg Myers. I wasn't sure how b- big this venue was since it's at Mahal's Twenty Lanes, and yeah, it's Twenty Lanes because it's a bowling alley. Um, so yeah, it's a smaller venue, so I don't know, that's kind of cool. This is probably going to be the smallest venue you've been to. Mm-hmm. So yeah. To be fair, I've only been to two concerts, I don't really have a big... Well, this is uh, your number three, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we will, we will. you know, I'm I'm a fan of Big Myers, so she's probably my favorite newer artist. Of course, I mean, it takes a lot to break through, because what I listen to is like 70s and 80s stuff, and a bit of 90s. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations to her. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts going in? <laughs> so, I'm excited. I'm happy. Uh-huh. I, uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm chill with it being a smaller venue. I, yeah. I don't particularly mind. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm glad that she's here. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. <laughs> well, no, a smaller venue can be fun. Like A-pop, uh, A-pop Take Me Berserk, when I saw them, pff, it was probably like 15 years ago. I feel old now. It was before you were born, so more than 15 years ago. I'm old. <laughs> Fun fact, but yeah, when I saw them, that was a fairly small venue. So, uh, and they pawned a great show. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, we will see what she does. I know there's two opening acts. They're supposed to start at eight. I've not heard of. I think it's. Uh, it was like ba- I want to say like Silverman or something like that. I want I, w- I want to say like Band of Silver and Weathers. I guess, like, we'll hear a bit of them, and we can give you our thoughts on them. Mm -hmm. As far as Meg Myers, I mean, I like the artist. We'll see how she does live. Um, Any songs you're looking forward to? Okay, so I actually, there's a lot of songs that I think would be fun. Oh, okay. So, (laughs) we're going on a journey. Ooh. We could probably get our audio. I think that uh, some songs that I personally enjoy from her, Mm -hmm. I think would probably be, like, Feather... Mm-hmm. I really want you to hate me. Mm-hmm. Little Black Death, Funeral. Yeah, these are Death of these me. are songs that aren't are singles, but it would be fun. But to it do would be fun to hear cuts, them. You yeah. Know? Uh, I think if she wants to play Underground, I think that'd be really fun. I like Underground. Oh yeah. Well, that one was cool. a single. So that, that, that one is that, a single. That, so that, that one has a higher chance. chance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I doubt she's gonna have a cello guy because the cello isn't that predominant in a lot of her music, but if she does, okay. I would not be against hearing Monster. I mean, I would not be against hearing Monster in any scenario, yeah. but if they have they, a cello guy. He might be able to figure that out, because I think that was a single. Yeah. They might figure that out. And I feel like creative. if we I feel like if we get in there and there is a cello guy, we, we know yeah. <laughs> that, that song's gonna play. Well they might just fake it with a keyboard too. Yeah. And that that usually works fairly well. Um probably like for me, like obviously Motel's probably still my favorite song by her, so obviously I hope she'll play that. And that is a single, so that's a strong possibility. Yeah. Um he brought up Underground, which would be awesome. Yeah. Feather would be great, but that's definitely more of a deep cut. Um it's a great song. It's like her longest song. I, I actually want her to do longer songs. If I had a criticism of her, it's like she does too many short songs. I want her to do more songs where she like expands out, you know, just explore the sonic landscape of this for a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. it feels like you got a really good beat and then it's over. It's like, uh, go a bit further, go a bit further. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Feather would be great. Well, the, of the newer one, A New Society would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably my favorite track off the new one. And, like, I wasn't going to do an official album ranking. I did go ahead and listen to them, but there's only three, so it's not really worth doing a huge album ranking. Um, so my number three uh, is probably Take Me to the Disco, which um, I think sonically might be her most interesting, but there's a couple of songs that don't quite work for me. But then again, there's also a couple of songs on that one that are, like, fucking amazing. So that one, it's hit and miss, but overall I do like that album, but that'd be my least favorite of hers. Number two would be the new one. Uh... How you pronounce it? Zia? Tizia? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, T Z I A. Tizia. We'll learn tonight. We'll so learn tonight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we will learn what's pronounced tonight. And yeah, no, I think uh, that one, uh, there's less duds in that, but there's also, uh, I don't think the songs are quite as interesting as Take Me to the Disco, but there's less uh, songs I'm kind of lukewarm to. So. I slightly like it better. And then my favorite still, our first one, Sorry. I just think that's a fantastic album, pretty much from beginning to end. Um, but yeah, I guess we will we will see her live here in a little bit. Um, it's only like, it's almost eight now, and I think the first, doors opened at, at seven, and the first show's supposed to start at eight. Earliest she's gonna be on is 10. We're probably gonna be here for a while. But hey, it'll be fun. I guess if we aren't really fans of the first couple bands, we will see how expensive the lane is probably really expensive because there'll probably be a lot of people there tonight probably. yeah uh but yeah um we will see how it goes mm -hmm. and i'll try to get some footage of the concert so yeah. you guys can share if you guys so uh check back for you later <laughs> Too stark. 
We'll just go with the natural car light. The natural light. The, the natural car lighting. Lights. Yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. The, the, <laughs> it was too hot and too enclosed. And I almost passed out. Yes. And then I was having like back problems, so we had to leave early. <laughs> yes, we, we, we only saw Meg Myers for three songs. Um, what'd she do? Uh, we saw. Uh, she came in, she did Children of Light. Children of Light, too, yep. And then uh, A New, new society, society. And then and Running then Up the Hill. She, yeah, and then I, somewhere in between there, she asked for water, so yes. it wasn't just me. Yes, <laughs> yes, it was very small and uh, lots of heat. Um, Everyone was like shoving past each other. So all the time. I mean, we end up seeing more of Weathers than Meg Myers, honestly. Yeah. And, and Weathers was fun. They're um, very they're, they're, enthusiastic. They're like a they're like a throwback '90s punk band, I'd say. Uh, very bad religion vibes from them. Um, but yeah, they were fun. Yeah. Um, and then Meg, uh, we didn't get to see too much, but. You know, well, I could say essentially she's doing a, a one-person show. Yeah. Would it be proper to say one man, one woman show, one person show? I guess we'll go gender neutral. <laughs> yeah, we, we can go what one person show. I don't think one man show would really be perceived as being like too bad. You know, because I feel like yeah. we say one man show a lot whenever it's just one person performing. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, she was, she's, you know, so she's depending on lots of backing vocals, but she's doing lots of uh, electric drums, lots of keyboards and vocals, uh, obviously. Um, and yeah, I, I thought she was doing a solid job, what I saw. Yeah. <laughs> it I, wasn't uh, that much, but... We did actually, when Mimi was uh, going through some recordings of her, we did find a recording of her doing a song live rather recently, and she was doing a guitar as well. Yeah, well, there's a whole bunch of guitars there, so I imagine yeah. that we would get to some guitar. Maybe she's playing guitar now. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But like I said, she's still in there playing. Uh, Ashley's not feeling well. It will allow us to get home earlier. But Whoa. yeah, so I guess it's a partial review. Um, I think that she's good at music. Mm-hmm. I did see her. I love her songs. Um, like I said, it was a one-person show. Just some lights. You know, it's, it's small scale. I would say, like... For the price, this is a solid show. Um, you know, uh, if you're a fan, go check her out. Um, if if you're not a fan, then you should probably then I don't even know why you're listening to this. But like, uh, if you're interested, yeah, uh, check out her songs. She's great. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. There's not much to say. Like the yeah. three songs, she did it one person. She did it solid job. Um, uh, I guess we'll have to see. Setlist FM to see what other songs she's probably going to do. Um, yeah. I wonder if it's listed other songs that she will do. Okay, so... Let's see if any of my... Wishes are coming true while I'm not there. <laughs> yeah. What are those dream songs you wanted? Oh, she's doing Feather right now. <laughs> she's doing every single song I ever wanted her to play. <laughs> mm. As soon as I leave. Yeah, a lot of these are incomplete. Mm. Oh, here we go. Uh, New Society, Running Up That Hill, Wasted Confetti, Hiding the Amsexual, Lincoln Park's Numb. Uh, Z we never learned how to pronounce it. That never is did. tragic. Yeah, that's sad. Sorry, Teenagers, Monster, My Mirror, Constant, uh, Bluebird, Ovary Speak, I Just Want to Touch Somebody, 1111 Desire, Encore Me. Well, she just did me. So this is actually going to be a different set list, so I don't know what it is. Okay, well... Because the Encore's me, but she was playing me when we went after running up that hill, so yeah. she might mix it up every time. Yeah. This is madness. We won't know. Well. We will not know. The first, but we know the first three, so yes. uh, checkmate. We, we yeah, do, we did it. <laughs> that is it. Um, like, you know, she was having trouble, but even once I stepped out, I was like, wow, I do feel a lot better. Like, it was hot and. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I like, mean, yeah. And then, when we first stepped out, I actually, like, collapsed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it was bad. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, I... you, you get feeling better. Yes, I will. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we'll keep in mind if we ever end up going to this venue again, which we probably won't, but yeah. I mean, the manager was nice, so. But yeah. The manager was nice. Yeah. Um, they could use some more air circulation, but yeah, we will, we will, you know, 
Fun show. <laughs> fun, fun show. What fun. we saw. Yeah. What we saw. What we saw. Yeah, I, I had fun. Yeah, know? yeah. But, uh, but uh, time to head home. <laughs> yeah. All right. Later. Hello. Hey. So, uh, yeah. A couple days after the Meg Myers concert, um, I'm a bit less forgiving of the concert than I was at the time. <laughs> What are, what are your was, thoughts, Ashley? It was <laughs> sort of. I didn't really like have any like strong opinions. Like I thought that the songs were nice, but like that's just because they're playing like you know the song, and I always thought the song was nice. You know? Yeah, like it's yeah. my my opinion on the matter is is pretty much that you know we we didn't just go like did we go there to see Meg Myers? Yes, but we didn't just go there to see Meg Myers. You know, like, we wanted to, like, you know, get to, like, hear the music in, like, a live format with, like, instruments and yeah, stuff. And we didn't yeah. really get that. <laughs> Not really, you know? I mean, she had her she keyboards had and her guitars and there. Her electrical drum set. Yeah. But, like, sh- she could only do, like, so much at once and it was mostly backing, you know? Yeah, it was a... Uh... Underwhelming. Really disappointing. Also, yeah. she didn't have a band or anything. No, with her? not no, all. It, it was, was her by herself. Like huh. a really loud backing track. <laughs> yeah, and it was just like, oh. Ugh. And like oh. you, you could like uh, you could tell there were times where like she messed up, and you can kind of hear like you could hear her mess up. But you could also hear the backing track where it kind of half covers it up, and it's like, ah, oh. uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's. Well, that, that, that's that, that can happen with live performance, you know, like mm-hmm. accidents. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, happen. yeah. No, there's, it also, I've never seen a live also, performance without an accident. <laughs> yeah, it also helps if you also have a band. Yes, so. yes, yeah. yes. I worry about so much of that, but uh, is that like? I'm, now, I'm not familiar with Meg Myers at all. So, how would you describe her music? Uh, it sounds. Good. Yeah. I don't really know how like to said, describe it's like, it. It's, it's like, alternative it's rock. A... <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm. Um, uh, kind of '90s inspired, but like I don't know. There's an '80s vibe to her as well, but it's an '80s rock vibe. But yeah. Like, what would probably be her top song? Probably her cover of "Running Up That Hill." <laughs> I think so. When when it comes to like you know like the songs that she that she's made herself though, not to, I mean of course she made the cover, but you know mm, when it comes yeah, to like yeah, her original yeah. song that she made herself though, her most popular one is definitely "Desire." Yeah, probably "Desire." Okay. That was pretty big. Yeah. No, well, pretty big from yeah, it's not huge, but yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure last time I checked on the YouTube channel, at least it has more views than the cover of "Running Up That Hill." Does it? Yeah. I, I in fact I that. actually I just thought that was the most popular one, but you always say running up that hill is Well running know. up the hill was the one I first saw and I, like here's the deal. I'm a sucker for a cover of running up that hill. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that that's fair, that's valid. Um and god damn it, but I did it before Stranger Things. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's about how I felt. Because, you know, we listen to like that cover all the time, you know? Yeah. And then like, you know, Stranger Things came out and everyone's like, Oh, what song would save you from Vecna? And it's like, nobody ask me. Mm-hmm. I don't want to tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> They're all going to think I'm the most unoriginal person alive. <laughs> but yeah, it's it. Okay. I think like essentially it feels like an artistic choice by her because like she had done previous tours of a live band. And it feels like she's decided, I guess, maybe because the pandemic, like she'll just do like a solo thing, because that's almost certainly just how she recorded it. Just like, you know, playing around mixes and stuff, mm-hmm. which I get, you know, you're pandemic, you're locked in the house. Um, but I feel like her, it feels like her idea is, OK, so I, I did this locked in the house. so I'm going to do the live performance. For my, uh. Like if you could actually do it live, go ahead. But like if you're depending on backing track, just don't. And that's just. I, I feel like it's an artistic choice by made by her that frankly doesn't work. Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like I said, th- there are times for a backing track. Hell, we watched Wish You Were Here and they used, you know, backing tracks for like, you know, the intro of Creatures uh, thing and shit. It's shit well, you can't like uh, copy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't. I mean. Exactly. Exactly. It was mostly Roger making those sounds on yes. the album. I yes. Mean, but they were also s- actual samples of. Yeah. The tracks. I mean, now if the band members themselves recorded themselves <laughs> mimicking that, that would have been that would have been cool. awesome. But yeah, but yeah, <laughs> it's it's awesome, one of those things where it's like, know. um, like backing tracks should really just 
be used if you have like no other option and you need that sound there um yeah like it should just be a drum loop if you need the drum loop yeah like a drum like i think a background drum machine would be fine um i do obviously Better prefer than a live drums track. but yeah. yeah yeah i mean uh well okay. i mean i always go back to genesis but like they talked about how like mike rutherford did the the drum machine for mama huh. and then like when they did when they went on tour they're like okay now we actually have to figure out how to do this on a regular drum set because that what do you do on, on, live that's what you do yeah <laughs> uh so yeah it, mm. it was just a it was a disappointing show um i i hope it was an artistic choice i hope she doesn't repeat <laughs> okay how was the uh crowd for it uh the crowd was uh we we weren't really there, there the too whole time. Many. Yeah, but there, there was, was too mostly many there. what I remember <laughs> of the crowd is that there were too many of them. Yeah, there was well okay. that's the thing, it was a very small area where we're all packed in. Um like I said, you know, you cool. you, you know Scully's. It's a yeah. small area right like that. Uh much dinkier stage. <laughs> oh, they got an even tinier one here in Columbus now. Oh. They got this uh place called Woodlands Tavern and mm. it's pretty much half of a big room of a bar. Mm. But the stage is like a little isolated corner of it. But they have this whole fake wall separating the actual bar from the concert area. And it's just this kind of big open room. And when it gets crowded, like, you're not even, like, standing like this. You're kind of like this. Yeah, that's it. And then... This is fun. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, strangers yeah. are grabbing all types, all spots on my body. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> Also, why I wear hoodies to shows like that and keep everything in the pouch. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think at the end of the day, disappointed. Um, I would not want to see okay, another yeah, show that's... on this tour. But like I said before, uh, well, we weren't recording then. Weathers did a great job. Weathers opening did act. a pretty great yeah. job. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really my type of rock, but like, um, no, I'm not against you know that style rock either it just it was fine and they did they had high energy they had a full band um (laughs) the little things that you appreciate later (laughs) and uh yeah like i said the 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 lead singer like after the show he went out and just hung out the merch table for the rest of the night which was awesome that is pretty awesome yeah that is actually pretty cool yeah (laughs) so uh yeah Uh, did you guys get did you guys pick up any merch or anything no no the merch thrilled us yeah. It was kind okay. of nowhere. Yeah. Like, uh, would they have shirts? Like, yeah, hats, just shirts, posters, shirts buttons. and hoodies. Just shirts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I usually just get a shirt, and if it's available, a tour book. But that's not common. <laughs> that's tour book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a sucker. I, I mean, book. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, they don't really sell tour books now. I just usually go shirt and poster mm-hmm. or show poster. But like a lot of the ones I'll, I've seen late, or where I've gotten the show poster is like a poster made for that exact show. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's usually like maybe 15,000 of them or a thousand of them. Nice. So they go quickly. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, like when I'm going to see Les uh, in a, on, at the end of May, mm-hmm. or at the end of this month, yeah. I'm going to definitely try to pick up a poster for that. Mm-hmm. Like, I might even mm-hmm. pre-order mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's unfortunate you, you all didn't have a good time, but at least yeah. the opener was better than the yes, uh, headliner. Yes, yes. That's the a plus. Weather's, weather's kicked butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. But uh, yeah disappointing but it, it it is what it is it was a <laughs> weather's concert for me <laughs> yes it was <laughs> okay all right but uh so next next week we have oh guardians yeah, yeah we kind of already kind of t- hit on it guardians yeah, we... three fast six and uh mission two okay the the uh the alt metal uh mission impossible oh yeah that's right that's the crappy one that is the one with the crappy soundtrack. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> and the slow-mo shots. Mm-hmm. Limp oh. Biscuit, right? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Limp Biscuit. They are still a thing. Are they still a thing? Dude, yeah. I did not know that. I didn't know. Google Fred Durst right now. Oh, no. Fred, right. Dur- Fred Durst doesn't 
it's weird. Like, I don't like Limp Bizkit music, but Fred Durst is kind of fine in my book. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he he seems like an all right guy. Yeah, but, like Google, like how he goes to, goes on stage now. It's mm. it it's kind of hilarious. Nah. I'm not gonna lie. We're doing it right now. We're doing it. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it's it's kind of worth it. <laughs> He's leaning into this gimmick hard, and it's kind of great. Okay, here's three weeks ago. Limp Biscuit. Mm. Probably performing. Oh, wait. Do you... No. He doesn't actually have footage. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he's got some old man gimmick where he's dressing like a 60-year-old man. Oh, really? <laughs> got, like, big gray hair, gray wig, and, like, he's same Fred Durst, but just nah. looking like an old man, and it's kind of... <laughs> I, okay. I kind of laugh. Yeah. I mm -hmm. thought it was funny. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Yes, that is the Mission Impossible with Limp Bizkit. Yes. Mm-hmm. The John Woo one, as I already called the bad one. <laughs> yeah, the bad one. Yeah. No, it's weird. John Woo is a talented director, but I swear to God, sometimes he just goes, like, pure style in the action. It's like, uh, can we have a story? No. No story. Okay, cool. No story. <laughs> but Zack Snyder borrows a lot from this movie. A lot. It does seem familiar that I could I could probably get some Snyder stuff. Going oh, on. when we, when you're watching it, you, when you're watching it, you'll know the exact part. Nah. Well, we'll we'll find out next week. Uh, yeah. Until then, like, subscribe, uh, like and subscribe to Bobby Quarters, like and subscribe to Organized Chaos. Uh, yeah. Everyone have Take a good care. one. Got it. <laughs> it's the perfect freeze frame. We're good. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth.